So the question is, why as yoga teachers do I need to know the nervous system? Friends, it's really very important at least to know the basics of our nervous system so that we can develop and teach the program to students with nervous system disorders. Understand what the deeper teachings of yoga, pranayama and asanas are and also to create a safe, effective, therapeutically oriented yoga program for nervous disorders. Among the most common misconceptions about yoga is that it's just another form of exercise. Perhaps this is because people often see yogis stretching and doing weird poses. However, the reality is that the benefits of yoga are more than just the physical. And thanks to modern technology and functional MRI scans, where now we are able to see how regular practice affects your brain. Let us understand our nervous system. The nervous system consists of the brain, spinal cord, sensory organs and all of the nerves that connect these organs with the rest of the body. Together, these organs are responsible for the control of the body and communication among its part. The nervous system controls everything you do, including breathing, walking, thinking and feeling. The brain is the control center and the spinal cord is the major highway to and from the brain. The nerves carry the messages to and from the body so the brain can interpret them and take action. The nervous system has two major parts. The central nervous system also known as the CNS and the peripheral nervous system also known as the PNS. Today we will cover the central nervous system. The central nervous system is comprised of the brain and spinal cord. The CNS receives sensory information from the nervous system and controls the body's response. The CNS is differentiated from the peripheral nervous system, which involves all of the nerves outside the brain and spinal cord that can carry messages to the CNS, that is your central nervous system. Now the central nervous system plays a primary role in receiving information from various areas of the body and then coordinating this activity to produce the body's responses. Now let us understand the central nervous system, the structure. Now the CNS has three main components, the brain, the spinal cord and the neurons or the nerve cells. So let us first talk about the brain. Okay, so the brain controls many of the body's function, including sensation, thought, movement, awareness and memory. The surface of the brain is known as the cerebral cortex. The surface of the cortex appears bumpy thanks to the grooves and folds of the tissue. Each groove is known as a sulcus, while each bump is known as gyrus. Cerebrum. The largest part of the brain is known as the cerebrum and is responsible for things such as memory, speech, voluntary behaviors and thought. The cerebrum is divided into two hemispheres, a right hemisphere and a left hemisphere. The brain's right hemisphere controls movements of the body's left side, while the left side of the hemisphere controls the movement on the 
body's right side. Each hemisphere of the brain is then divided into four interconnected lobes. The first one is the frontal lobe. Now the frontal lobes are the largest of the lobes. As indicated by their name, they are located in the front part of the brain. They coordinate high level behaviors such as thinking, planning, reasoning, motor skills, problem solving, judgment, higher cognition, uh, voluntary movements, language and attention. The frontal lobes also manage emotions and impulse control. Additionally, it plays a role in self-awareness and emotional regulation. As you can imagine, this part of the brain is racing when you encounter a dilemma or when you feel self-conscious about something. However, during yoga, your frontal lobe goes on a vacation, thus allowing you to take a break for a while. Parietal lobe. The parietal lobes are located behind the frontal lobes. They are involved in organizing and interpreting sensory information from other parts of the brain. This part of the brain handles all the information coming from your senses. It takes in the sight, sound and everything else you observe around you. As such, when you are always on the move, working, driving or observing things, you can imagine how much activity is going on here. Yoga likewise causes your parietal lobe to slow down. Temporal lobe. The temporal lobes are located on the either side of the head on the same level as the ears. They coordinate specific functions including visual memory such as facial recognition, verbal memory such as understanding language and interpreting the emotions and reactions of others. Occipital lobes. The occipital lobes are located in the back of the brain. They are heavily involved in the ability to read and recognize printed words along with other aspects of vision. Cerebellum. The cerebellum is located in the back of the brain just below the occipital lobes. It's involved with the fine motor skills which refers to the coordination of smaller, more finer movements, especially those involving the hands and feet. It also helps the body maintain its posture, equilibrium and balance. Spinal cord. The spinal cord connects to the brain via the brain stem and then runs down through the spinal canal located inside the vertebrae. The spinal cord carries information from various parts of the body to and from the brain. In the case of some reflex movements, responses are controlled by spinal pathways without involvement from the brain. Neurons. Neurons are the building blocks of the central nervous system. Billions of these nerve cells can be found throughout the body and communicate with one another to produce physical responses and actions. Neurons are the body's information superhighway. An estimated 86 billion neurons can be found in the brain alone. Now let us talk about the protective structures of the central nervous system. Since the central nervous system is so important, it is protected by a number of structures. First, the entire central nervous system is enclosed in a bone. The brain is protected by the skull, while the spinal cord is protected by the vertebrae of the spinal column. The brain and the spinal 
cord are both covered with a protective tissue known as meninges. The entire central nervous system is also immersed in a substance known as cerebrospinal fluid, which forms a chemical environment to allow nerve fibers to transmit information effectively as well as offering yet another layer of protection from potential damage. Research on Yoga for Nervous System In the review published in the journal Brain Plasticity, researchers looked at 11 previous studies that focused on the relationship between yoga practice and brain health. All of the students used Hath Yoga, a form of yoga that emphasizes a connection between conscious breathing and movement, as well as meditation. Yoga practitioners showed more grey matter volume in their brains, which has been linked to a better mental function, particularly during aging and more cortical thickness. Another plus when it comes to brain structure, since it's linked to higher intelligence. The takeaway here is that when you are looking to improve brain health, you don't need to decide between high intensity aerobic exercise, which has often been associated with better brain function and more low impact, slow moving exercise like yoga. According to Neha Gothe, PhD study co-author and director of the exercise psychology lab at the University of Illinois at Urban Champaign, we are excited that yoga practice appears to have similar benefits from the brain as we see with much of the aerobic exercise research. She told Runner's World, the preliminary studies we reviewed demonstrate a positive effect of yoga practice on the hippocampus, amygdala, cingulate cortex and prefrontal cortex. These are regions of the brain that are responsible for memory and information processing as well as emotional regulations. For example, the amygdala located deep inside the temporal lobe is responsible for behavior prompted by emotional responses. She said, it's your center for fear and aggression, but also for the pleasure and contentment. Getting greater tone in that little set of neurons can reduce fear-based responses and elevate feelings of well-being. Friends, the best way to keep our brain healthy, no doubt yoga is the best. Research has proven that, right? But let's be a little bit more lenient. And now, apart from yoga, what are the other ways that we can have a healthy brain? Use it or lose it. Improve your mental fitness by regularly reading, learning, or doing activities that makes you think, such as crosswords, puzzles, sudoku. All of these help stimulate your nerve cells and may even lead to development of new brain cells. Protect your head. Always wear a helmet. When playing contact sports or even riding a bike or a cycle, be sure to buckle up when you get in the car. Both of these can go a long way when it comes to avoiding brain injuries. Exercises. Doing regular cardio workouts stimulates blood flow throughout the body, including your brain. Quit smoking. While smoking is bad for your overall health, it can also lead to cognitive decline. Listen to your thoughts. Try to check in from time to time with your thoughts or feelings. Keeping a diary 
is a good way to get into this habit. Look for any thought pattern or emotions that seems to be impacting your day-to-day -day life. They could be a sign for an underlying treatable psychological condition. Yoga is commonly thought of as a series of poses that involve stretching and other complex movements. As such, its benefits are often believed to be physical. However, its effects are more far-reaching. The combination of poses, breathing and meditation produces structural changes in your brain. This not only causes certain areas of your brain to increase or decrease in size, but also affects your cognition as well as how you process your emotions, stress and anxiety. All of which help you live a happier, healthier life. So friends, that's it for the central nervous system. In the next part, we will cover the most important, the peripheral nervous system, the fight and flight response as well as the rest and digest. We will understand in a better and easier way. See you soon. Take care. Keep smiling. Namah.